The images are here and the discoveries are already freely flowing. Since JWST started releasing data, there's already been a flurry of claimed discoveries and observations. Here, let's take a look at some of the most interesting ones. By far, the most common claim at the moment is for extremely distant, extremely high redshift galaxies. This isn't a huge surprise because JWST is easily imaging incredibly distant and incredibly faint objects. Now that data is available to lots of scientists and to the public, it's no shock that initial analyses are already showing a treasure trove of distant objects. Before we get to the crux of it, I just want to point out that these are all candidates still. It's the team saying, hey, we think we found this ancient object. Results could change with more data and more analysis. The most accurate way of finding the redshift of an object, which roughly corresponds to its age and its distance, is to use the spectroscopic instruments on web to take a spectrum of the galaxy or whatever object it is. However, this data isn't readily available for the object we've seen yet, so the teams are estimating the redshifts using the images they have. This is called a photometric redshift. It's a well-used technique that can be really effective, but it tends to have larger error bars. So these numbers we'll see here need to be confirmed with spectroscopic redshifts as soon as possible. I think this plot is really nice for trying to turn a redshift into a more useful number, like age or distance. Additionally, some teams are finding different things to other teams. Some reject high redshift objects that other teams keep, and some disagree by considerable amounts about the redshifts claimed. At the time I'm recording this video, of the 150 or so claimed to be detected, only 11 appear in more than one team's detections. Despite all this, it's fun to take a look at what they're all finding, just bearing in mind that they're all candidates for now and it's not a firm detection. Let's start with a paper by the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, SEERS, that claims to have spotted a distant galaxy at a redshift of 14, which is huge. We're seeing the galaxy as it was just 290 million years after the Big Bang. From a non-scientific point of view, this galaxy discovered has two fun things about it. Firstly, it's been named Maisie's galaxy after the principal investigator's daughter, as it was found on her birthday and she'd already asked him to name a galaxy after her. So, you know, that's pretty cute. Secondly, the paper announcing the discovery has a fun title, very much in homage to Star Trek Wars. The galaxy itself is almost certainly at a redshift that's more than 13, with the most likely number being about 14.4. It does look pretty blobby here. Even Webb struggles to finally resolve such distant objects, but seeing it at all is a huge achievement. It's a relatively massive galaxy and is highly star-forming, which I think is intuitive for such an early galaxy. You'd expect it to be a huge cloud of stuff that's collapsing to form a lot of new stars. But is this type of galaxy to be expected at this redshift? Well, no, not really at all. It's much more massive and it was seen at a much higher distance than we expected, especially this early in Webb's lifetime. This galaxy plus the others we'll look at are teaching us an important lesson. Galaxies formed much earlier than we thought, and these ancient galaxies were much more massive than we thought too. This idea had already been hinted at by a few other surveys, but now, with all of these web images, it's becoming very clear. This next paper saw two really bright galaxies, one around redshift 11 and one around redshift 13, meaning this most distant one existed when the universe was just 300 million years old. Due to the expansion of the universe, it's actually over 33 billion light years away from us now, even though it's only 13 and a bit billion years old, which is kind of cool to keep in mind. Remember that we're seeing it as it was then, not as it is now. It probably is less blobby and has a lot more structure nowadays. But Webb is doing a great job of the blobology of early galaxies. At the point that it looked like this, our sun didn't even exist yet, and it wouldn't exist for another 9 billion years. So I hope that puts into context how ancient these galaxies are. In this plot, the two stars are the new galaxies. And just note HD1 up here, which is the most distant galaxy ever seen by Hubble. This is pretty much the furthest that Hubble can possibly see. Webb, however, is just getting started. Next up, this paper from the High Redshift Group in Edinburgh, which found a bunch of high redshift galaxies. They saw six galaxies over redshift six, and the highest was a redshift of 16.7. This galaxy is now around 35 billion light years away, and we're seeing it as it was just 235 million years after the Big Bang. This color picture of it is pretty cool, and the paper says that it has a mass of about a billion solar masses, and a mean stellar age of about 20 mega years. Now, if Webb continues to nail everything it looks at, 
there are chances it could see all the way back to just 100 million years after the Big Bang. We haven't reached that point yet, but in this paper, we got a whole bunch of candidate galaxies from Redshift 11 all the way to Redshift 20, which is insane. That's when the universe was less than 200 million years old, and again tells us that massive galaxies seem to have formed much earlier than we thought. Again, and even more so with these super high Redshift candidates. We need to wait for spectroscopic data to confirm these numbers, but it's all a very tantalizing prospect. Before we go, I'll just put on screen a few other new images we've seen from JWST recently. A few of these are just new views of the calibration images we've talked about before, and some of these are brand new objects we're seeing for the first time with Webb. We even saw a tease of the TRAPPIST-1 observations too, in this image of a raw spectrum made from the raw data by some kind soul on Reddit. And we even saw new angles of Jupiter too. We also got a paper all about the early release observations. And in this paper, they gave us some cool images comparing the first JWST images with the previous infrared telescope Spitzer. These aren't really anything new or unexpected, but I think they look really nice, so I just wanted to share them here. I'll put even more papers and announcements in the description for even more cool discoveries that we just don't have time to cover here, so have at it. Although, be warned, it's a real wormhole once you get started. Leave any questions or any hot JWST scoops you have down below, and subscribe so you don't miss all the upcoming content about JWST and more. Until next time, stay safety. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.